Welcome to Searching for the Question Live. This is episode 17. And uh, I would like to welcome our viewers on the simultaneous uh, live stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, um, and to invite you for questions that you may have both to me as uh, your host uh, with regards to what we are going to discuss uh, today, but also uh, other episodes that uh, were especially interesting or intriguing for you, uh, but also to uh, our guest. And our guest uh, today is a, uh, is a friend uh, uh, who lives in Queens, uh, New York, but his uh, stories, uh, his uh, mission are global. Uh, he is a, a, a singer, a songwriter, an artist who is especially interested in understanding how uh, our modern stories and modern narratives can leverage uh, our global interconnectedness and how we can create uh, new storytelling that is up to the challenges that uh, we are facing, that recognizes how people all over the world uh, are facing struggles, uh, have uh, ambitions, desires, feel uh, meaning that uh, unites them. So uh, welcome. Uh, to Searching for the Question Live, uh, Stefan Said. Hello, Stefan, and uh, thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having Thanks me. For I'm so happy, to, happy, be happy here. to be here. So, Stefan, let's start a little bit uh, about uh, yourself. Uh, uh, you have a very interesting uh, uh, story, both uh, your own life, but also uh, your your roots that are so multicultural <laughs> to be uh, really in intriguing. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an artist I'm and a artist, musician, and musician and an activist, and, an activist, and I've spent my life doing that, and I think a lot of that, that comes, comes from, from or was inspired by my background. My background. And uh, uh, I was born in the born States, in the but States, my mother's but Austrian. Austrian. I grew up there during yeah, World during War II, um, and um, my father's my Iraqi. Iraqi. And Almost the entire family on my father's side is in Iraq and has been there through through everything that's happened up till today. Um, lots of them are, are doctors in Baghdad and in Mosul and dealing with with the coronavirus situation they have after they've dealt with war for the last thirty years, basically, right? Um, um, so. Actually, uh, why don't you uh, share with us? And I am, of course, happy to see you appear healthy. But uh, uh, how, is, how is the situation uh, in, in, in New York in general and in Queens in particular uh, around your, your home? Right. Well, I mean, in New York, every, as you must know, it's really hitting its peak or they're anticipating this next week, two weeks are going to be kind of the, the peak of uh, deaths here from the coronavirus. Um, it's already been the epicenter for a good two weeks in the, in the United States. Um, and Queens is the hardest hit of that whole area and not our specific neighborhood. I live in a area which is wonderful. Our average, the Manhattan and, and other places, but about five miles from us in Elmsford, it's the highest, the highest death rate in the country. Um, it's overwhelmed uh, all of the the systems. And um, what can I say? It's uh, New York is a completely changed place. Somehow, I guess about four days ago. Uh, five days ago, I really saw, as the death rate started to go up, I saw a big shift in, in just the energy outside. Of course, the streets have been empty for two weeks now. We've been on lockdown. And that's been bizarre in New York City to see the entire place basically shut down. Highways are almost empty. Um, but uh, now you really feel a sense of fear. The last four or five days, people, it was palpable. So what can I say? Can you hear me okay? 
Um, it looks like your uh, Wi-Fi connection is uh, very choppy. Uh, I don't know if you can plug in to an Ethernet uh, uh, outlet or maybe position yourself a little bit differently in your home. Of course, uh, all the uh, Internet uh, service providers are okay. under heavy pressure and uh, it, uh, it, it, um, it shows. Um, but yeah, we could hear you. Is this better? Here, can you hear? Here, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It, it, it is fine. It is fine. So um, thank you for describing that situation. And of course, uh, we, uh, we are all uh, looking at the various uh, news stories. Uh, you know, I'm talking to you from Bergamo, which, which was the, the epicenter before New York uh, became. Uh, and and uh, you were uh, telling me about uh, your um, relatives in, in Iraq who are uh, in the middle of of the pandemic uh, uh, over there as well um do, did you have the chance of um exchanging some information and understanding what is the situation on the ground in 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 places like uh, Baghdad or or Mosul um not not so much specifically i have we have had communication luckily we know they're all okay but um uh and uh, well the one thing i will say is that my one of my aunts who's a doctor in, in Baghdad, like one of the biggest hospitals, had sent, she's very humorful. So she just said, perhaps this, this little protein, this was like two weeks ago, she sent a message saying, it seems this little protein is doing more to get people to think about the world than, than almost any effort by anyone, hence, you know, before him. Little protein. <laughs> well, well, and 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 part of uh, the uh, the narrative that you are creating with your art is uh, that humanity is is one, that we are united, and the uh, uh, the more aggressive of us who thrive in conflict uh, can now identify a common enemy that we feel no qualms. Uh, towards in 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 combating and hopefully defeating, uh, at least I don't think that uh, any PC army pretends that we should have respect towards the coronavirus and please not to kill it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I I that's an astute I think statement. Um, uh, but, uh, so uh, so tell tell me tell me about uh, um, how how you became uh, an artist and and an activist. Um, uh, is it just something you came up with uh, because it was uh, fashionable a year ago or something that uh, that you were born with or something that happened as you became who you are today and and uh, what was the process i it's definitely something i became but i i i seem to have been um it was definitely a calling it's been my whole life you know i as a child, I was a musician, and but raised by parents that were very passionate about uh, human rights and equality and justice. And um, my stepfather was a Jesuit priest who had left the order, but was very, uh, very much committed to uh, to a, you know to a moral justice, and and raised me to believe that my talents. Uh, were to be used for that purpose only, that that's why I was here uh, and why everybody is here. And so I think between sort of my music, my inherent musicality and that kind of moral upbringing, um, that's where it all came from. It's sort of, a, it, it was a natural marriage of the two. So when I uh, was old enough, I left high school early to become a musician, but while I was on tour already when I was 17 and 18 with bands across the country, I was, I was a real political science and philosophy and history buff because I was, I was, yeah, wanting to figure out how I could use that music to do something to change the world for the better with. And, and very quickly, of course, uh, those merged into making music that was socially conscious and, um, and that's where I, I realized I could be all the things that I was passionate about. I could, I could work on all of them in one at, at once. Um, and yeah, and yeah, that's how it happened. So, 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 uh, uh, why don't we listen to to one of your songs? Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, entitled 
Love Make the World Go Round. Uh, why don't you introduce us to uh, a little bit of uh, the backstory uh, of the song, uh, how it was uh, born and and uh, what uh, process uh, made you write it and, and create the video that we are about to see. Yeah, well, this Love Make the World Go Round is a song I wrote about six years ago now, and I had just started to develop this idea of bringing the world together through my music in a much more, say, advanced and networked way by traveling to frontline situations and filming my interactions with people and meeting and working with people at the front lines of change wherever they might be and whatever issues they might be working on and making music with them wherever they were. And part of the the impetus in that was one, well, yes, to show how connected the world was and to make great art with people around the world and to lift their voices. Um, and then another part of it was was to, yeah, was to realize that a lot of the, you know, people that have been dealing with the most extreme crises on the earth, really at the front lines, have answers. Um, they have answers to these questions because they're the ones that are dealing with it. And that's why we need to listen to them. Um, and so uh, going to Iraq was the first instance of, of this whole big vision, which has now become a, a, a docu-series and a, a project involving a lot of people called Borderless. But that was the first instance. And I went there and I'd done about a couple months of outreach and, and meeting young people, uh, people of all kinds working in civil society, the arts, government, you name it, uh, to make make things better there. And they could be working with inter, uh, inter, um, uh, internally displaced people. They could be running the, the youth orchestra, a film institute to teach filmmaking to, to kids, uh, working in the hospitals. It could be anything. And I and ended up with several partners and went there and made this music video for Global Unity on the streets of... Uh, of Baghdad uh, just after the 10th anniversary of the start of the second Gulf War. Uh, so bombs were going off while we were filming and um, and yet hundreds and hundreds of people of, you know, of all faiths uh, were came together to make this, uh, to try to send a, a shining example out to the world. It was profound um, and inspired me to want to keep working on it because, wow, wow. I, mean, I mean, the people just, People are really resilient and people are, uh, yeah. You, and you see it in the music video. It's all documented. Yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, listen to it. And then uh, after uh, that, we will uh, talk more about both specifically uh, this and as well as what blossomed uh, from it, uh, which is, of course, uh, borderless. So, Stefan Said, love uh, make uh, the world go round.
Wow. Haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> so uh, definitely, definitely wonderful. Uh, let me stop the next one before it's, oh, no, too late, whoever that is. <laughs> yeah, almost looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is uh, beautiful and uh, heartwarming and emotional and, uh, and uh, really uh the 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 seeing the, the people participate is 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 incredible uh not that your words and your music is is less beautiful but uh, the connection uh, is uh meaningful so so uh how how was the process was it uh, uh was it um, easy and simple was it dangerous and complex uh, was it surprising in in the outcome did you uh, believe it would come out like this uh, as you went in? I really didn't have any idea what was going to happen because it was our, my first time going and doing something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I think, well, I will say that we came out, out of it with far more than I ever expected. Um, but I didn't have any, any idea going in. Um, I know that my skill set, I think if I have one great skill set that enables me to kind of be or skill sets is one, I, I think I'm accustomed to trauma. So I can go into places like that and not be phased, right? Um, I think that's a big skill set that you have to have if you're going to work or work in a war zones or in, you know, the aftermath of a hurricane or, or whatever it might be, right? Um, and then the other thing is I, I'm, I, I can excite people. Um, that's sort of just, you know, that's a, as a performer or whatever it is. Um, maybe that's just guy also because I really do love people. Um, but the process was, I just had the idea and the vision for it. And, and I believe that people all around the world really do want to come together. I, I don't just believe it. I know, and I, and in part, maybe I wanted to prove it to myself. But I, at this point, I feel like I, I have proven it to my even the, any part of me that doubts it. But people really, the majority of the world wants to come together and live more equally, and they know that that's the only way life is sustainable. And if if COVID hasn't proven that to the world, then people are really they're just not being honest with themselves because everybody is already operating under that um, that 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 uh that acknowledgement i think right now and that's profound so uh, i went to iraq with really that being the main thing that i had i said hey look i want to make a music video for global unity and if, and if there's a message for global unity it needs to come from the world's biggest the ground zero the ground zero of the world's biggest war today that's where that message needs to come from um not from Hollywood, um, not that it shouldn't also come from Hollywood, but we should hear the voices of those who've lived through this. And if that was it, and I went there and sure enough, everybody felt the same way and was passionate and ready to come on board. Um, now it was dangerous, you know, 
it was uh, there are parts of it that were dangerous. There are parts of it that didn't go as well as maybe I did. But then there were the accidents that were miracles um, that far surpassed any any small troubles we had. Um, so uh, what can I say? We came back with so much more footage than anybody would have thought. <laughs> and we have uh, uh, wonderful viewers who uh, take advantage of the fact that we are live and, and send us questions and, and remarks and, and observations. Uh, one of our uh, frequent uh, viewers, or, or maybe he has seen uh, all of our episode, uh, is, is Emiliano. And uh, uh, he, he makes this observation, careful to stream music, uh, because he says, Facebook may reclaim the rights of the song you streams. So this can have two interpretations. And, and I will ask uh, you uh, your, your opinion as well and, and make a remark, uh, because I, I, I know you have uh, strong uh, positions uh, with regards to music labels. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, a copyright uh, is uh, that of the author regardless of uh, where the, uh, the, the, the piece of art is exhibited or performed. So the mere fact that uh, uh, the uh, song is uh, streamed on Facebook, for example, changes nothing with respect of the fact that, uh, that uh, Stefan is the, the, the owner uh, of the rights uh, uh, of, the, of the song. And, um, and, and uh, it, there is a lot of uh, need, really. Uh, and maybe we will uh, dedicate a, uh, an episode to talk about not only copyright, but also about trademarks and patents and, and how the online platforms are using and abusing the current system, but as well as uh, attempts to reform it, such as Creative Commons, which is a wonderful framework for more modern subtle and and uh, uh, better adaptable versions of pre-negotiated agreements where artists can offer a certain set of rights to uh, other people without the lawyers right. getting involved uh, also the, the the fact that uh, in in Europe for example uh, there are uh, moral rights associated uh, with a work of art in the fact that you may transfer the ownership of the copyright, which is the uh, economic, um, uh, the, 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 the right to um, exploit economically and monetize a, a, a piece of art, doesn't uh, alienate your uh, moral rights to, to, to the work of art. And this is something that, for example, in America doesn't uh, uh, exist. Yeah. The, 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 other, the other point is around... Uh, uh, ad-based uh, business models. So uh, the fact that uh, um, Facebook or YouTube may put advertising or not around uh, um, some some piece of video in our case. So right. by saying coronavirus, we resolve the problem at the root because uh, a blanket decision, quite comically censorious, by YouTube, and I would expect Facebook as well, as soon as you say coronavirus, magic word, uh, 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 on, on a video stream, that piece of video is not going to be monetized through advertising, which is absolutely fine by me for many reasons. One, because I don't have a million views on the videos or more, which would make the advertising revenue meaningful. Uh, so you could say that's uh, sour grapes. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't want to be exposed to uh, what it means to become a container or a frame around what really matters, which is the advertising, right? I don't want right. uh, my guests uh, to feel that is that is their role. So um, what, is, uh, what is your uh, opinion and feedback uh, with regards to... Uh, the role of your your music vis-a-vis -vis the uh, music industry and commercial labels and uh, the exploitation through advertising of uh, of musicians by the online platforms well i mean i've had a in any artist deals with this as an activist i've i've of course dealt with it fairly head on 
um, because at least in the, the early part of my c- career, just to give some context, um, I was a pioneer of using uh, of using the internet to distribute protest songs um, and making them go viral when when the music industry was you know when the word viral was already wasn't really even quite a, a word yet um, and b- even before YouTube existed. Um, and you know, in the days of Napster and stuff, when the music and entertainment industry was actually trying to stop anything that was that was uh, undermining its grip on the uh, on intellectual property, right, as a means of their profit stream. So, um, but my point was, even though I was at that time signed to a large label, um, they they were they allowed me to do what I did because I knew that's what I was known for. But I, I, there are times when, um, and we're seeing this right now with coronavirus, when the mechanisms of, of profit making and, and um, bidding and control uh, idea ownership get in the way or are much, much too slow to, let's face it, to save people's lives much too slow to stop wars, much too slow to get the truth out um, when it is necessary for everyone's survival. Um, and at times like that, I believe that the artists, it's in all of us, it's up to us to speak out and not to allow ourselves to be either censored or delayed in speaking so long as to basically been, be effectively censored by mechanisms that are seeking to to profit from what we're doing um now the internet is now that they've got enough control of it that they can make money on it anyway even if you do things immediately things have changed since since 20 years ago right since the napster days of of uh of efforts to democratize let's say the the internet or um Things are very different now. I personally have a have a, for example, I have a distribution deal with maybe the biggest distributor in the in the world, right? Sony, the Orchard Group, and Sony. Um, but they have, at this point in time, like most of them, they've matured to the point that they even, while they may uh, seek to distribute the material on Spotify and Pandora and uh, Title or any of the other big distributors, they allow and actually condone and even themselves will put things up on YouTube where they know it's basically out there for free or just small amounts of ad revenue because they consider it to be good promotion. Yes, yes. And uh, another friend of mine, uh, the founder of uh, mp3.com, had a very contentious relationship where he basically created what we today know uh, as uh, um, Apple Music and uh, Amazon Music and whatever other right. cloud-based music service. But at the time when that uh, maturity from the music industry uh, didn't didn't come yet, uh, and the way that he he did it was was extremely inclusive. He allowed you to upload your CD collection. Uh, to the to the cloud, and if right. somebody said, "Yeah, I have those CDs too," he would immediately make available the same songs to the other person as well, and and he was uh, sued and sued and sued and sued. Uh, there were something like 140 simultaneous lawsuits against him at a point when he was actually able to sell uh, the 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 company to uh, Vivendi Universal. And then he created other uh, uh, streaming services, and he was sued again. And and part of the lawsuit involved songs that were available on his platform that were part of these promotions that you just mentioned. And and it is paradoxical that on one hand, uh, uh, it is the music label itself that puts these songs so that they would travel and they would create the buzz and the viral uh, benefit for the artist as well as for the, for the la- label. And on the other hand, uh, the legal department will sue somebody because 
they are doing exactly right. that. They are making the song right. available. Now, yeah. uh, 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 let's uh, uh, look at another question that uh, Emiliano is asking. What do you think um, after COVID, the um, world of music concerts is going to look like? Do you have any, any idea of, have you thought about how it will both look and feel like uh, to go in a room with a hundred people or or five hundred people and and play for them, knowing that I don't know what percentage is going to be immune, another right. percentage will have never had COVID, and maybe a given percentage will be actively infectious. Yeah, I mean I think the anybody I mean. If, Anyone can imagine because we don't have enough information right now, really, and we don't know how long this is going to go on like this. And will there be a vaccine? Will we? How? What percentage of us will will be come immune naturally, and or for how long, if at all? Um, so I, this is the, this is the big question that everyone's asking, um, and it's it's too early in the sense because we don't have enough information, right? If by chance if we find out that we really can become immune to it. it. Two years from now, people might not mind going to concerts at all anymore again. Well, right? and, 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 it and will, if we it can, will if we can't, <laughs> then people are going to need vaccines, shots, proof of ID cards that they've had them. God knows what. That's um, right. So, that's right. and that's, that's, uh, that's devastating. That's going to devastate the industry, which basically doesn't exist on art anymore and it hasn't for years it exists on spectacles right the only money in the music industry anymore basically has been in touring for years because there's hardly any money in in actual the, sales the show, of the music. The show itself right the shows and the in the merchandise from them are, are where the money is at not the not the sale of the songs anymore because it's basically you know the music itself was devalued by the by how how it could be gotten for free basically right nobody makes money on the music anymore and 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 uh, in a in a very different way but uh, uh, analogously um, I, I earn uh, money from speaking at conferences which has uh, been uh, immediately and completely canceled of course all over the world right and and part of uh, the reason i am doing these experiments uh, in live streaming and talking about also the setup the software the hardware that i'm doing and so on is because I believe that we must develop an economically sustainable digital uh, uh, event concept and product where we um, deliver value to people who in right. turn are ready to pay for that value. Yeah. And, uh, and that is uh, true for for uh, conferences that where where i may speak or for whatever format your art uh, uh, will adopt in order to spread uh, and 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 um i don't know if you are already having uh, conversations uh, about this with uh, uh, the orchard uh, but uh, i am sure they need uh, to 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 test and to experiment as much and as rapidly as as they can, because uh, also you know the the Spotify model is uh, not uh, something that uh, brings enough uh, income to to artists. So uh, right. a new kind of thinking is is needed uh, there as well. Yeah, certainly. They, I mean, I can only imagine they must. Uh, you know, I I hadn't thought it about it from their perspective so much uh, per se but the uh but imagine being a major distributor and what you're looking at um, um yeah, yeah. have, what, have uh, you had lunch yet or or you are gonna have lunch after we speak maybe after okay because your wonderful wife anushe is probably setting up the table we can hear it in the microphone oh, oh I don't, okay i don't know <laughs> i don't know if she, she wants to say hello i would welcome her uh, to oh, she's, say hello. she's taking off to the other room but, <laughs> but she's waving hello okay okay <laughs> hello anushe <laughs> i think she grabbed something and then moved on hopefully you're not hearing it anymore no problem no it wasn't loud <laughs> and, and and of course i i called out to her just to just to 
to <laughs> talk, not because it was any, any anything bad at all. Yeah. So, so let's go back uh, to your experiences as an activist, as an artist, uh, uh, in realizing the virality of your message, and and how, especially uh, after the song um, that we just heard, uh, "Love uh, Make the World Go Round." Is it make or makes? Because both make, are make, make, love, make. So it's imperative. Yeah, it's like a, a call. It's like a, it's an incantation. Yes. So, so the song "Love Make the World Go Round" um, uh, matured a, a certain degree of understanding in in you of your calling of of the potential that your art represents, and and uh, uh, led you to to create Borderless. So. Tell tell us about borderless. Uh, what what is it? What are what are your ambitions for it to become both before and now with COVID? Yeah, well, so you know, gearing up to over the last since Iraq, so over the last five six years, I've I've then after the Iraq video that you saw and, and that many other videos that came out of that project, I went to Pakistan and filmed similarly and did a huge concert for peace there, kind of at the peak of ISIS. And then when I went uh, at the front lines of the refugee crisis in Greece on the border and all, all around the country when it was at its worst. And then in the middle of Hurricane Harvey. And then after that in Charlottesville, Virginia, after the big race riot there that resulted in the death of Heather Heyer and uh, did, did, did anybody tell you Stefan please don't come because wherever you are it's a disaster <laughs> no I was born that way I was born that was that was that's my you know that's my what do they call it that's my birthright <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> what, what, what no. did you um synthesize uh from from these experiences uh you told us how you feel that that people fundamentally want to be connected that they want to express their struggles and desires that uh, that music and and uh, songs are an incredibly powerful vehicle for making that that happen uh, how is borderless making that possible well, so now our plan for this coming year and the next couple of years is that we're, and this is obviously coronavirus is going to change the way that this happens, was that it was going to become a full-time thing where I'm in eight or 10 locations per year on a on constant basis, working and meeting and uh, organizing with change makers and uh, every, everywhere I went um, and featuring their voices, and then also creating collaborative experiences and music wherever I went. Um, and this whole project then builds a, gro a global network of these voices, and um, uh, it's exciting. And we had just gotten to the point over these la over this last year where it had matured to the point where a great team is on board to help push take that vision to the next level. Um, now. At the same time, uh, coronavirus, it's who knows who can travel when right now. But the intention for Borderless ultimately was always to be able to be, was to build local nodes and networks and for it not to be dependent on, on my traveling um, at all. It was, uh, it was the purpose of that was to, to be able to get around and to instigate and to start and light a fire. Um, and that is not necessary. It's not entirely necessary. It has its own, has its own set of, uh, my actually going places, for example, has its own set of, of, um, of capacities and, and, and things that it can create, but, but there are many things that can be created just through nodes as you're, we're seeing, look at everybody that's speaking out wherever they are. So if we can give voice to and modulate the, the vision or, or already graduated to its second, second uh, year or whatever, where we already are having the nodes speak for themselves is sort of what I think we are looking at trying to do. Um, 
the, yeah. the, the global connectedness of uh, the planet is is beautifully expressed in in many different uh, platforms and 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 through um, in, in now with uh, with COVID as well through uh, various creative ways uh, where we can see you know people singing uh, from uh, their right. properties in in Milan or or uh, in their front yards in in New York and 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 things like that. Yeah. Um, it, and and uh, the the tools that we have available are smartphones, uh, video equipped, able to record and to share um, things uh, so easily. Uh, uh, really, have uh, zero barriers uh, to entry. What they need is a catalyst like you, uh, where, for example, already in a in a very joyful uh, manner, you have uh, crowdsourced. Uh, the the music video of, of the song that we saw before. So I would assume you will also seed your global um, community, uh, the nodes that you mentioned, with uh, an invitation, with uh, the incantation, as you called it, yeah. that uh, enables them to uh, then participate and self-express in different manners. Is that right? Yeah, I the you know I'm hoping very si shortly in the next few days or so to to finish a song that I've written in response to this and to to uh, to invite everybody that I I can around the world to participate in 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 either participate in that song or in a video for it or in making their own making their own expressions. Um, what we need is a big conversation right now about what what does this moment mean to us and what how can it propel us to to seize it to to change the world for the better and you know connectedness is great but the real thing we're after is what can we do with that connectedness so a lot of people so, are afraid that uh, uh what who who they call strong men and i prefer to call them weak men uh are right. going to grab the opportunity for um, consolidating their grip on former democracies or, or ever eroding democratic uh, structures, uh, and that uh, the uh, desire for empowerment and uh, really uh, the uh, enlightenment objective of following uh, reason and science to make everybody understand that uh, that they have their destiny in hand uh, is going to be extinguished that we will go back to feudal times uh, where uh yeah a, a very few uh define what everybody else must follow under penalty of of death either directly killed or just uh, um uh, with no um opportunity for emancipation and, and and fulfillment so do you agree that uh, a more likely outcome of the current crisis is a scenario like that or 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 not well I, it's too early to agree i think that but, it, but it's not too early to say that that's a possibility and that we would have to fight that with everything we can and to use this moment to articulate the fact that it actually proves that, you know what, we can't, if we can combine, if we can all come together and realize that we're one fighting this tiny protein, this coronavirus, uh, then we can also conquer inequality. We can conquer hunger. We can conquer uh, every, every major crisis on the planet. We can stop climate warming. Look what's happened already. Look how clean the how clean all of our cities have gotten in two weeks of rainstorms without constant pollution. Um, the it, it proves that we can do it if we just decide to do it. And I think that we need to articulate that and we need to raise that in a series of demands together. We should use this uh, this connectedness, this proof, in this moment that proves that we are all connected, that we are all one to, to actually 
yeah, make some demands. We need to make turn this into into real change. Um, otherwise, it is very possible that what you're saying could happen. Have you received uh, Trump's check yet? <laughs> no, I don't. I haven't even. I mean, I don't know if you have to apply for that or not. But I would assume that I'm not eligible for it. And you know, twelve hundred dollars, if which you know, I definitely wouldn't be. I don't think I'm eligible for it, honestly. But I, but if I were, it would be a truncated version of that. And living in New York City, it's not even. It's a fraction of one month's bills. Yeah, no, of course, it's and, not. It's not like this is. It, it's, you know. Uh, so, so, I think that uh, the the uh, the intervention, as it is, is kind of the worst of both worlds, because the two trillion dollars that have been allocated show that radical paradigm shift is possible if necessary sure that two trillion could have just paid off all of the school debt student loan debt there is and had and much lot time, left over and then at the same time um it is not enough for the needs of the, the the people who are unable to sustain themselves because they had no savings right. they have no income they have no health uh, insurance uh, there is a, a, a lack as we know in the us of universal health care and and some other basic human rights um so so the, it also shows still and of course they they would strongly uh disagree with that if we ask them, a lack of leadership and a lack of uh, um, creativity in facing the, the scale of the challenge with an equally ambitious scale of experimentation and solutions. Um, but you said uh, something that, that I, I, I think resonates with me because I am trying to 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 think and and formulate also my messages of course as you said we are all learning there's nothing that is uh, established or given that uh, yet and and one of the things that i am i'm trying to understand is how the current crisis can accelerate certain transformations that we're brewing anyway you know the 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 debt crisis the financial crisis the fact that 2008 was just a prelude that uh, solved nothing because nothing fundamentally changed uh, the, uh, the, the 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 hunger for debt was shifted from mortgages to other things, uh, yeah. to business loans, to to car loans, whatever they were, um, and 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 as you said, our uh, blindness to the urgency of restructuring our uh, processes so that they are not only economically but also ecologically sustainable these come to a head in a moment of crisis like this and and when i would speak with the people about this in the past i would always sarcastically remark that in the past the tensions could be very conveniently eliminated with a war. And anybody who survived, per definition, was right. They could write the history books. And uh, it was the tool, blunt but effective, right. that for thousands of years we used in order to uh, create right. new attempts to solve things and progress. And that with thermonuclear weapons, this tool is unavailable. Now, the hundreds of millions of deaths, or maybe billions, that we would have had um, with, a, with a nuclear world war are inconceivable and incomparable with what we are under today. But still, the incredible horror movie rather boring by the way if you ask me uh, unless of course you are one of the health workers uh, uh, or people who are in the intensive care which is probably right. anything but boring but for the people like you and me you know we we are 
fine except that the psychological pressure is almost unbearable. So the right. situation that we are in today creates the premise for messages of empowerment, emancipation, transformation, and leadership uh, in, in our economy, in our way of thinking, in the way of organizing our uh, governance structure, and the way that we inspire people all around the world. This is a great opportunity for creating and spreading those messages. So uh, we are uh, getting uh, close to the, to the end of our hour together, which uh, flew away. I, I had a lot of fun and thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> great uh, to be what, with you. What can uh, people do? I, I showed uh, uh, two of your um, of your um, uh, websites uh, where they, they can go. But if somebody said, oh my God, Stefan and his song really inspired me. He said that he's going to be releasing a new song shortly. He said that he's accelerating uh, the plans for Borderless to become a participatory platform where I can be a part, I can be a node, I can start to express what I feel, what resonates because Stefan's message is so beautiful. What should they do? I, you know, I'm, I'm easily found Facebook or Instagram or whatever, even if I don't use one of the platforms a lot. I'm there and you can message me and I will get it. And I, um, and I hope that you will. And obviously they could reach out to you, David. And, um, and I will, when I, when I'm, when I release the song, I will let you know. Um, and I, and I would love to know what everybody else is up to too. I mean, I think this is a time where, where we have to, we have to put our principles on the table and we have to take a stand and we have a, Look, this has proven to us more important, not just that we can come together, but it's proven to us also it, that inequality is not sustainable. It's the greatest threat to our mutual existence. If people are can't heal themselves, can't inform themselves, and that's going to result in all of us getting infected by something, that's the biggest threat to all of us. So this is this is this is proof that that we need a more equitable world and that should be that's that that's the that's the most important goal for anybody that wants a secure society more than weapons well of course and, that's and, why, and, and that's that's why not, the weak men that's why the weak men who uh, um, uh, are positioning themselves as if as if they were strong but they aren't feel the the need to surround themselves with uh, uh, weapons uh, that either are uh, physical or, or weapons of destructive legislation, uh, regulations yeah. that uh, suppress uh, uh, the ability of people to uh, to organize or to affirm their their desires and their their ambitions. Yeah. Uh, Stefan, thank you very I much hope, for being I with hope us. To hear and, from you all. Thanks and, for and having and me, yes, David. Uh, uh, everybody, um, please uh, reach out to to Stefan. If uh, his uh, message uh, resonated with you, uh, we will certainly have him back uh, when uh, his uh, new song uh, is out and when uh, his global community uh, is uh, creating uh, and participating. And uh, we will invite him back on uh, Searching for the Question Live. Uh, I am uh, very happy to see uh, participation uh, in uh, uh, the, the show. Uh, please. Uh, join uh, our growing community. Uh, come to davidorban.com slash sftql uh, where you can uh, read about uh, uh, our activities, join our Discord discussion board, vote on future guests, as well as suggest your own guests who you would like to see uh, on the show. Uh, sign up on uh, my newsletter to be uh, updated on on uh, my activities and uh, finally if uh, you believe that uh, uh, this uh, uh, show uh, and uh, uh, my team uh, deserve your uh, support uh, join uh, as a, a supporter on patreon 
in order to help us uh, keep uh, creating and keep uh, sharing uh, what we do. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we are uh, happy to have had Stefan and you. Uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to see you all tomorrow.